Okay, so hi students. Um, so uh, welcome to the class again. Welcome to to my video lecture again. And uh, today we're going to learn the second and last topic, the new topic, the second and last new topic throughout the semester. So, so the the topic is named single source shortest path. So uh, before we start uh, our today's lecture, let's first review what we learned last week. So last week we mainly learned the applications of depth first search algorithms. So for first we learn an algorithm named topological source. So with this sorting algorithm, uh, with this sorting uh, sorting algorithm, we uh, uh, so we will be able to sort the nodes inside a graph by following the topological order. So the so one one famous application of that is say uh. So we need to put on socks before shoes, and then put we need to put on uh, uh, our uh, underwear before pants, and then after that it is the belt. So it's it's able to sort these things based on um these different pieces of clothes based on who should go first. Okay, and then um, so we learn another application of it, which is named strongly connected uh, connected components. This is like uh the clusters of nodes. So by by say by saying uh, a, a set of nodes consists of a strongly connected components, we mean that uh, from every pair of the nodes there is a path to toward <coughs> there is there is a route to go, and then, um, uh, so the main uh the main entry from last week is the minimum spanning tree algorithm. So the with the minimum spanning tree algorithm, our our objective is to find a, a subset of edges from a graph, so that we can get all the nodes connected by using this as picked edges. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the total weight of this uh of these picked edges are minimum. So uh. There are two algorithms to solve the problem. One is named Kruskal algorithm, and the other one is named Prim's algorithm. So we passed the uh, we or we didn't learn the Kruskal algorithm because it relies on a different data structure. Instead, we just go for Prim's algorithm, even though it it also relies on a new data structure named named Priority Queue. I'm not sure if you have already started this homework, the Prim's algorithm homework, or homework nine. Uh, in my point of view, it is the the most challenging one throughout the semester. So you should re really be pre be well prepared for it. Okay. So and then let's let's talk about the our topic today. So the topic is named single source shortest path. So uh. So in the single source shortest path, uh, our uh our problem, we are giving an input as a directed directed and weighted graph like this one so so we have a set of nodes and a set of edges with directions and then each edge comes with a weight the weight can denote let's say the distance or the amount of time that we need to spend on the edge um so so here uh in in a single source shortest the path algorithm we are also giving an additional uh node we call south south node so let's say if we put NYC as the as the south node, then um so so the we we expect this algorithm to to tell us okay what is the best route the or what is the minimum distance from the south node to every other node in the graph. So for example, with this algorithm, we uh, if you set NYC as your south, it is so so it is able to compute the best route from NYC to every other place in the map. So uh, this algorithm is widely, widely used in navigation systems. And, and that is how like Google or Waze are, are help us to find the, the, the shortest route. Okay, so um, uh, this is the, uh, the uh, description of the algorithm. So with that being said, okay, some of you may, may say, it seems that BFS can already help us to resolve the problem because previously we said that BF, BFS is able to... B, BFS, this is the BFS algorithm. It comes with a S, a graph and a S, uh, which is the south node, and the output is the minimum distance. We say S 
the we have uh, for each node we we associated with a d which is the distance and if it represents the minimum distance from the south node to this particular node okay so some of you may say oh yeah it seems that bfs can really help us to solve the problem but but actually it is not so there is one major difference be between bfs and and the single source shortest path is that in the, in BFS the graph G this graph G is undirected and on and unweighted. Okay, there is no weight and no direction in the in the edge. So what what as a result? So as a result, uh, it can only tell us how many hops do we go from the south to a certain node. I mean, so how many nodes, by, by, by the number of house, what I, what I mean is that how many edges are included in the shortest path from the south to the destination. So, for example, you can take, uh, take it in this way, okay? So this is uh, the south node, and here it says, okay, from the south node to y, the minimum distance is 3, okay? It is 3 because we need to go, to, go through 3 edges. That's why the, the distance is three. So it does not, this algorithm, the Bradford search algorithm does not differentiate the weight or the, say the, the, the cost on associated with each edge. It just takes every edge as the same. But in practice, if you are using navigation system, it is different. Say for example, if there is a highway that connects from NYC to New York, it may only take one hour. Otherwise, if there is a highway that directly connects Newark to Miami, it can take up to 20 hours. So uh, it won't be fair if we say that, okay, the minimum distance and uh, the best way to go from NYC to Miami is this way, uh, because it, it is, it is so it, it's just two edges. Yes, it's, it's two edges or two highways, but one takes one hour, while the other takes eight, more than 18 hours. So, so that's why, um, the breadth first search algorithm cannot help us to, to solve the single source shortest the path problem. So here is the limitation. Mm -hmm. So, and that's the reason why we need to propose a new algorithm. Okay, so before proposing a new algorithm, we need to, uh, I need to first talk about two utility algorithms or, or functions. And these functions are relatively easy, but we are going to use them later. So the first out the first function is called initialize. So the initialization algorithm takes two parameters g and s. So g is the, a, a graph and s is the south node. So what this uh, what this pseudo code does uh, function does is that for each vertex in in a graph, uh, so for each vertex in the graph g, it, it associates each node with a a, a, a a distance that is infinity. So v dot d is infinity. V dot d means v dot d means the minimum distance from minimum distance from south to to v. Okay, and v dot pi. What does pi stand for? So if you watched my my pre, to, uh, previous videos, you should be very familiar with the definition of pi. Pi is another word for parent. It's short for parent. It's like before. If you are, if you want to take the shortest path from from the south node to V, so before reaching V, what is the last node you should reach? Okay, so we call it a parent. So again, it asso associates every node with a pi that is new, and then for the south node, it associates it with a distance that is that is zero. Okay, again, let me ask you, what is the reason why we set s dot d as zero? Mm -hmm. If you remember that in the uh, uh, in B, in BFS and and the prim, prims algorithm, we have the same operations. So uh, in so let's look at the breadth first search algorithm. So we we also have s dot d as zero. So the reason why we set it in this way is because from the south node to the south node, the minimum distance is definitely zero, right? Yes. Um, that's why we, we, we have this operation. Okay, so this is called initialization. We, we will use this algorithm at the beginning of the search. It's like prior to the official start of the search. 
it, we, we just assume that from the south node to every other node, the, mi the minimum distance is infinity. Because we don't, if, we don't even know if there is a route to go from the south to, 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 to any destination. And except for the south node, who who's the minimum whose minimum whose d is just zero because from south to, to itself we need to travel zero miles okay so this is the initialization algorithm and then on the right we have the relax algorithm relax function so the relax function takes three parameters which are u v and w so u and v are just two nodes and there so so there must be and so to to call this function on on u and v there is a must there must be an edge starting from u to v and w is the weight function so with w u v we know okay how how much weight is is it associated with the edge uh between u and v so <clears throat> okay so for <clears throat> u and v we know that there is a we know that there is an edge from from u to v, okay, and its weight, the weight of the edge is that is just the w u v. W u v can help can with the function uh, if we apply the function w on u and v, we'll be able to know the minimum. Uh, sorry, the 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 distance or the weight associated with the edge, and what this function does is that okay, suppose. We're at the some. We're in the middle of search. We haven't finished finished the search yet, but what we know is that this is the south node. And what we know is that so far, what we we have learned is that from the south to to uh to you from the south to you, we we find a path, and and this path gives u dot d. So this the 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 this is the shortest path from the south to you that we have found so far. We just do a, do a part of the search and this is what we have learned so far. So far this, the, the best or the minimum distance we have searched, we have known is that uh, from south to, to you is, is D, U, U dot D. Whereas there is another route to go from, from uh, south to V that we, which, uh, we have found and the distance is, the minimum distance is just uh, V, the, the, the this distance is just the the total distance of this route is v dot d okay is v dot d so these are just two numbers okay and let me just put put it in this way okay so um suppose here uh you are going to um so you're you're starting from Montclair and you want to go to New York okay you want to go to New York, and this is New York, for example. And then what we know is that if you want to drive from New York to New York City, it's going, it, it is going to take one hour. So let's say that for now, we are just doing a part of the search, and we just find, find a route which gives, which, which says, okay, from Montclair to New York, it is going to take 0 0.5 hours. And whereas if you want to go to uh, go from Montclair, Montclair to NYC, you just find another route. Uh, so this route, this is so far the best route we have found from from New from Montclair to NYC, and it takes two hours. Okay, so this is the knowledge that we have so far. We we know that there is a highway that connects New New York to New York, and it's going to take one hour. And we we just found uh, we just found so far the best route we, that we found from Montclair to New York is is going to take zero point five hour. Whereas the best route that we found from uh, Montclair to NYC is is two hours. So with this knowledge, what so you may say okay why not? We just follow this path and then use the from New York to 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 New York. And in total, it is going to give us 1.5 hours, which is definitely less than this this route, okay? So then it means that now we just find a better route. So this better route is this. We, so before going to, so, so then we can update 
N Y C dot D S one point five because from from uh Montclair to N Y C we just find the the best uh so far the best route is here which gives us one point five hours and then we know that the parent of new of N Y C is going to be New York because before reaching N Y C the last destination you should go to is is uh New York okay this is how we reduce the 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 t travel time from Montclair to NYC because we're leveraging this highway, the highway right over here. And here we have this a similar example, okay? So if so far, if if so far, okay, let's just consider this route, okay? Let's just consider this route. That if we want to go, uh, if we want to go to from uh, from the south, if we want we want to follow a route. So this route may cross may, may need to go across ten nodes or five nodes or just zero node, okay? To to reach, uh, U and then from U we just take take the the direct uh, the directed edge from U to V. The total distance would be U dot D plus W U V, okay? And what we want to do is that if we find that okay U dot D plus W U V is less than V dot D, it means that this rod in the in red color is is shorter than the is than this rod okay is then it's it's shorter than this rod then we will say okay we find a better rod if this is true then we will update v dot d as u dot d plus w v it's like we've just find a better rod whose distance is this and then uh so so the the uh uh so before before visiting v we should reach reach u first so u is the parent of v so that's the operation what we do so if if this is true then we will do these two operations that that is what we do over here if v dot d is larger than u dot v u, u dot d plus w v it means that we find a shorter route so which we, we should we should go to u first and then follow the edge to go from u and, and v so then we just reduce reduce the distance of v from v dot d to u dot d plus u v so now it has a smaller value and then we update the parent of v so this is the the uh relax function so by relax by by the name relax it's, it's kind of like what we want to do is that we want to reduce the minimum distance from s to this is s to v okay so we want to re relax or reduce the min the minimum the distance from s to v okay so this is the uh the relax function and then so so uh so uh, next there are two two things that I want to talk about uh, 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 the, the, the input graph. So there are two factors that we need to consider with regard to the input graph. So the first thing is that the input graph may include negative edge weight. So this may, may sound uh, not make sense to you, uh, nonsense to you at this time, because say if we want to go from uh, see from New York to New York is not going to take negative 0 0.5 hours there is no point there is no way for the time to be negative so as the distance you cannot drive 0 0.50 miles from from New York to New York but in some other applications this is very possible so for example okay so if we if we want to measure the um the balance or if we want to to talk about money okay this is your you and then uh so so <coughs> this is this is the bank okay and uh So what we do is that, okay, every time say, uh, we so let's talk about credit card. I'm not sure if, if any of you have a credit card. So um, I think nowadays most people have at least one credit card. And I hope that the, the reason for you to, to apply for, for credit card is not to, to 
get the free money. No, no money is free. So it's just free at, at the time when you want to make a purchase, but you have to pay it back. If you don't pay it back in a timely manner, it's going to be very costly. You are going to have a very poor uh, credit report, credit score, and also going to pay a very high uh, in interest rate. Nowadays, the interest rate for credit cards are around 22%. This is ridiculously high. So avoid it, avoid that, okay? If it's, it's fine for you to use credit card, but you need to pay the full amount, the full statement amount every month. So you, you, so you, don't, you, don't, you cannot just pay the minimum. If you pay the minimum, this is the interest rate that you have to pay, which is ridiculously high, okay? So, uh, so before, uh, uh, so um, I think for, for at least for me, one big incentive incentive to use credit card is, is cashback. So the so for example, if if you use a very good credit card, for example, they uh, uh, which gives which gives you three percent cashback. So what does that mean? Is that okay? Every time if you spend, so if you spend a hundred dollars. So it means that okay, you you paid a hundred dollars through your bank. Your bank is going to give you three dollars back. Okay, so so here I'm just having a uh, a uh, the uh, the negative negative three dollars is because here the bank really takes takes three dollars from their pocket and put it in your pocket so their balance or their their total asset is reduced by three dollars okay so so this is so if we if we model if we use the weight of the edge to 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 represent the the cash flow for the bank then this is here we we got a a negative edge weight so it's negative three because the bank just loses three three dollars by paying the to you okay so uh so here uh <coughs> so so here we say the example of negative edges uh, so it's, it's it's absolutely fine for for uh for for the existence of negative weights in, in, in a graph this is fine but the if if there is a negative cycle then it will be very very dangerous so for example someday if if the if one bank says okay i'm not going to give you three percent cash back i'm going to a hundred and three percent cash back so what it does is that okay what it does is that by if you spend a hundred dollars the bank will pay you a hundred and three dollars okay so if you if you if we you you got such a big offer do you know what you should do you should you should keep buying because the more you buy, the more you make. Okay, so every time you spend three dollars, a hundred dollars with this cycle, with with this cycle, the bank is it's like the bank just send three dollars to you. The bank just loses three dollars, three dollars, and you gain three dollars, three dollars. And if you do it in, if you keep keep shopping, if you just purchase a whole Macy's. Or if you just purchase a whole Neiman or a whole Best Buy, then you'll be a millionaire, and the bank is going to file bankruptcy. So that's so this is very ridiculous, right? So so that's why I say that okay, a negative negative edges, negative weight are fine, but not negative cycles. If there is a negative cycle, then it will be very probably it will be a big problem. So, so when we are doing short a single source shortest shortest path search, so we should make sure that the we can allow negative edge weights, but we must make sure that there is a, there is no negative cycle. Okay, so um, so um, okay, so to to solve the uh the single source shortest path problem, there are just two uh. There are just. <clears throat> there are two solutions. The first one, or there are two algorithms. The first one is named the Bellman Ford. So the Bellman Ford algorithm is not that efficient, but but it allows negative weight weight. 
it allows negative weights and also it allows negative weighted cycle. So what this algorithm does is that if your input graph has a negative cycle, it is able to detect the existence of such a negative cycle. And it, it, it is going to tell you, okay, buddy, your input graph is wrong. So give me, so you need to fix that. Okay, so um, this is the, uh, the, the power of the, of the Bellman Ford al algorithm. And so the, the key idea behind this algorithm is that, okay, so let me ask you a question, okay? So uh, suppose, <coughs> suppose that I'm just going to draw a couple of nodes from, so suppose this is Boston and this is New York and this is, let's say DC, this is uh, Atlanta and uh, this is, let's say, um, Orlando, and this is Miami, okay, all wonderful places, for, but we just cannot travel for now. So, uh, <laughs> yes, we can travel, but it's, it's not a good decision, right? So what we know is that, okay, there is a road that connects these different places, and Okay, suppose this is the road network between these different places. Let's say from Boston to New York, it's going to take four hours. From New York to DC is another four hours, and this is seven. From Boston to, to DC, if you take the direct route, if, if we, let's assume that there was a direct highway and it's going to take seven hours. From DC to Atlanta, let's say eight hours. From Atlanta to Orlando, let's say four, uh, four hours. And from uh, Orlando to Miami, let's say five hours. From DC to Orlando, let's say 10 hours. So here, suppose that, okay, so, uh, and also let's say we know uh, <clears throat> that there is a, well, you can go from DC back to, to New York, let's say five hours. And then um, from, and also you can go from Atlanta to, to, to go back from Atlanta to DC, let's say three, uh, not three, it's, let's say uh, 10 hours, okay? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just giving this example, okay? So suppose here, this is your, your south, you want to start from Boston and you want to reach Miami, you want to reach Miami. Let's say how many different cities are you going to drive across at most? So one, one solution is that you just follow this, this route in green color, in green color, okay? In this way, you got uh, four plus four plus eight plus four plus five, let's say how many, Tw in total 25 hours, which is very accurate, yes, if you want to go from, from Boston to Miami, I, I, I think that you have to drive like this many hours and and also, let's just consider a different route. So you may say, okay, I want to go directly from uh, Boston to, to DC without making a stop, without going across New York, and then I want to go from DC to Orlando, and then go to Miami. So then we got a blue route. This blue route gives us seven plus 10. Yes, seven plus 10 plus, plus let me say how many, plus five. This is 22 hours, okay? This is shorter. And let's just consider another example, okay? So another example is here. So suppose that you're going this way. Um, you first you go from Boston to DC, and then you come, you follow this route to come back to 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 New York, and then you go to this, you go to DC again, and then you go to Atlanta, and then you go to Orlando, and then you go to Miami. So here. So here, uh, so the total number of hours is that seven plus this five plus four plus eight plus four plus five, which is, let me say, how many? Uh, 25, 33 hours, okay? So this is the longest. The, 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 so let me ask you a question. Is there a way for this one? for this one to be the shortest path? Absolutely not, 
the reason is that you are wasting your time over here. You just so in the start, in the beginning, you you go to DC and then you come back to 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 uh New York City and then you go go to visit DC again. So here you are just making a cycle. You are doing a cycle, and uh, so with this cycle, you are you are you you. You move nowhere. You just so you just go from DC to DC. You just move, visit DC twice, but you pay let's say how many nine hours additionally, and so this is this is why there is no no chance for this route to be the shortest, and um, because because you are wasting time over here. So in in other words, so in, for any shortest path, in any shortest path, as long there is as there is no negative cycle. Every node. So if we have, if we have, let's say, um, so if, if 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 we have five nodes, you at most you you will visit each node at most once. You will not visit a node twice like this. Okay, you will not visit a node twice like this. Here you uh, you are visiting this node twice. It's it's a waste of our time because you are repeatedly vis visiting the same place. You make no move with that cycle. So. So what 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 I mean is that okay if there is n nodes if there is n nodes in the in a graph then a short the path can include at most n minus uh, n at the nodes at most n nodes and then to 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 connect this n nodes there at most n minus one edges okay so uh, so in a node with in, in a graph with n nodes a shortest as long as there is no negative cycle then uh, so a shortest path can contain at most n minus one edges. Okay. So this is this means what? Okay, here if we come back to the uh, relax relax function, what we does is that here, if we if we if we if we call the relax function on uv, what we do is that we try to add this edge to the shortest path, right? We try to add this edge to the shortest path. So if if by adding this edge, we'll be able to reduce the total travel time, then we do that. Okay, this is what we do over here. And then if let's come back over here. Okay, a shortest a uh, a, a sorry a, a shortest path can include at most n minus one edges n minus one edges. Then what what did, does this means that. We, so if we have n nodes, if we have n nodes, then they are at most n minus one edges, and, and such n minus one places. So one, two, 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 three. I'm just putting placeholder at most n, n minus one edges in a shortest path. So to find the shortest path, we what we do is that let's try the edge from u and v over here. Try to put it over here by calling the relax function. Okay. If we call the relax function once, it's like we try to put it at some, add it in the in the in the shortest path. Let's first try to add this edge at this place. If not, then let's try to add this edge at the the second place. Then at this place, and then until the last place, we it's like we we try to add an edge at every single possible place, and then, uh, so so this is how we discover. The shortest path. Let's give every edge a chance and put it. Try to put it at every possible place, and so this is the the uh, the uh, the key idea of the Bellman four search algorithm. So the Bellman four search algorithm takes three inputs. G is the the graph. W is the weight function, and S is the source node. In the beginning, we call the initialize initialization function right over here, and then um. For for i starting from one to g dot v minus one g dot v is like n for every possible place, and then we for each edge for each edge in the graph we we call the relax function by trying to add to put this edge at at the at this place in, of the shortest path, and and then so so this is the main part of the algorithm. So so if there is no negative cycle and then at this time we will be able to we will be able to find all the shortest paths <clears throat> so from uh, from the the single uh, from the south node and then so so the the sec this part is so this so this part helps us to 
will find the shortest of the path. Well, right, this the second for help us to detect negative cycle. Okay, it helps us to detect the negative cycle. For each edge in a graph, if v dot d is larger than v dot the u dot d plus w v, then it returns false. Return false means that there is a negative cycle. It detects a negative cycle. Otherwise, it will return true, meaning that uh, your the input graph is fine. It successfully finds all the shortest paths starting from the south node. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, the idea of of uh, Bellman Ford algorithm. So for this for this algorithm, I cannot use the example to go over it because let me say how many. So for if we have like like this one for this node for such a graph that includes five nodes, five nodes and and ten and ten uh, edges. So it will take me fifty iterations. 50 iterations, and this is going to be an hour example. I have to spend a whole hour on it, and does not make, make that sense. So for this algorithm, so so I think I, I uh, you, most of you can understand it based on my previous explanations, and actually it's super easy for to implement that. It's super easy, so n no difficulty at all. And so so this is the, uh, the algorithm, and the complexity of the algorithm is here, it is, v minus 1 times e, okay, v minus 1 times e is v e, o v e is the complexity of the, of the, <coughs> of the uh, algorithm, okay, so this is the Bellman Ford algorithm, and uh, uh, so this is the first algorithm to solve the uh, shortest path, single source shortest path uh, uh, problem, okay, so, and next, uh, let's talk about the second one named Dijkstra algorithm, okay? So, but uh, I think uh, until this point, some of you may already feel kind of like lost. But So, let me just talk about something uh, that is not strict, that is not st strictly related to our lectures. So, I'm not sure if you remember that around how long ago, maybe one month ago, um, when we um, when I taught the last face to face session, I said that I'm not optimistic about the COVID situations, and I think that Europe is going to explode first, and then um, United States is going to follow. Yes, now it happens. So, um, so but uh, out of my out of, out of my expect expectation, the the uh, explosion or the, the rise in the COVID cases in the United States is earlier than what I, what I thought. Previously, I thought that it's going to be in early December, but now it seems that uh, it's, it's, so it is one month earlier. And it, I think um, the, the main thing, the main reason for such a COVID outbreak is because of the election is in the election, which causes now we have more than 150,000 new cases a single day across the, the, the nation. So so in the past two or three weeks, I think election is the hottest topic even across the world. A lot, a lot of people just keep watching news and keep watching the Twitters, the tweets between between different people, among different people. So. Um, and some people even go to go to the go, go on street to show their support or to show their their anger against someone so so um i mean in my personal opinion uh i want to ask a question so what's the motivation for you to if if you are so it's absolutely fine if you want to go out and show your support or or show something it's, it, that that is fine but at least you should wear a face mask okay this is to protect you as well as the the other people so uh, so <clears throat> but but what surprises me is that in in, a, in the last week there are a lot of demonstrations especially the people who support trump okay i'm just 
I, I don't want to be a, a guy with a lot of political opinions, but I don't have any, I don't have, have a big favor against, uh, uh, over each one, or, or, or over either one. Uh, so I'm not a fan of either of them. Um, but, so, so at least I think the Biden is doing much better than Trump at, at uh, dealing with the, the, this virus because he's wearing a mask every time he, uh, he, he's talking with someone. And also he, uh, so, so he pays attention to it. But with, with the current president, the current president, so he claimed that he, he got this virus. I'm not, I'm not sure if, if it's true or not because the time is just, it's just right, right after his tax document was released and right before the election. So it's a great way to, to attract the media's attention away from his tax problems. Okay, um, but so I don't know if that's true or not, but the thing, the thing is that he, he doesn't wear a mask and he's, he, what he claimed that this virus makes him 20, 20 ages younger, 20 years younger, which is absolutely a BS, okay? So if I, if I were a doctor, if I, I were a healthcare worker, I'm, I'm just going to be totally mad with this person, with such an important person, okay? So, so what he does is trying to, to say, 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 play down the virus and also play down his mistake on this virus, okay? It's, so he, from the beginning, he didn't take the, he didn't take sufficient cautions or, or, or measures to, to stop this virus from spreading. And then he just said, okay, this virus, I, f- I feel younger with this virus. And now he, 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 he said, okay, I, 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 rec- I recovered within two days or three days. Yeah. I'm not sure if he really caught this virus, virus, but but even even, I hope, I hope that he didn't lie about it. But if he caught it, he should be able to know, so so how bad is this virus? Even though some athletics, some players, football players or or soccer players, they caught it. Some of them after the recovery, some some of them came out and say uh, talk about their their experience with this virus. For those people with with a lot of muscles, it's it's even a struggle. What about what what about for ordinary people like me and you, and what about for those senior people with health conditions? So so it's it's pretty it's pretty bad. And because of his 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 style, a lot of people, who, especially those one who who support him, go go on demonstrations. It's fine. Go go on street to show support to him. I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with not wearing a mask, okay? So if you are a health care worker, every day you are just working on working very hard fighting the virus and taking the risk of getting getting infected to rescue lives. But those people are just creating more, uh, literally forcing more people to the ER and to the hospital and to put, put the doctor's life at risk, which is not responsible at all. So, so what I mean is that, okay, so if you want to, it's, it's all about this, this election, okay, a lot of people just go out and either cel- celebrate or, or fight, okay, so without a mask, and that, that causes a lot of spread. So, if you, and unfortunately, okay, unfortunately, last week, I received an email from a student in our class, he has tested positive for the virus, okay, so we, I hope that he can recover. I think he has a very big chance to, to recover from it uh, because the, uh, the, the death rate of this virus is now is around 2%. So who are those 2%? Mm, mostly likely not, not people as young as us. Most likely it's, it's the elder people, older people. So we can recover, but, but it doesn't mean that we, we, we just can go out without a mask because if we if we catch this, this virus, we're going to spread it, spread it to the other people and put the other, let's say younger, uh, older people's life at risk. And if you are at the age of 70th and 80th, and if you if you watch just people out, of, out on the street without a mask, do you dare to step out of your door? Do you dare to go to a supermarket to buy groceries? So, be be a responsible person, okay? Be be smart. Do not 
go go on street without a mask. Especially do not go to protest or or celebrate with without a mask. And and also the other thing that I want to talk about is that okay. So it's going to be、uh, Thanksgiving. I know some of you are going to have a family gathering together, family dinner. That's that's the best thing in your life, right? The time with family to celebrate something, to celebrate a a holiday. So in this holiday, in this in this Thanksgiving, okay. So I don't I don't suggest you to to visit your grandparents, because yes, you don't want to put their life in job jeopardy. You want them to live forever, right? So, so uh, maybe you say okay, you 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 are cautious. You don't carry the virus, but if you if you have to take a flight, and then you are you are in a closed cabin room for two or three hours, so you know what there is a possibility, right? So I I have a friend who is a pilot, um,、uh, <clears throat> so so uh two weeks ago he caught the the virus. What he said is that he is very cautious. He always wears the wear the N ninety five mask face masks, but still he got he got infected. So, um, I don't I don't recommend you to go to visit your your family if especially if you want to take a flight, um, but if you if you still want to go. That's your personal choice. That that is fine. You should to be responsible for your family. You should at least get tested, get the COVID test before before leaving. Okay, make sure that you don't carry the virus to their house. So protect yourself and and your loved ones and also those innocent people. We have already lost more than two hundred two hundred and thirty thousand lives in just in this country. So we don't, we cannot let more lives pass away. So, so it's it's heartbreaking, and、um, okay. And lastly, what I want to talk about is that that is does it really matter? So who so is so who sits in the in a in the White House, who sleeps in the White House? That is 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 it is so important that so so to let. So many people go out and fight for something, or or go rally, or go something. Okay, so <clears throat> so maybe you think it's very important because because your your life or 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 is going to be impacted by that person. Okay, but really, so so let's say, in normally, so normally, if you if you want to hire a normal, an ordinary person to work for you. Let's say five days a week and eight hours per day. How many? How much do you want to pay? At least I would say at least around fifty thousand dollars for a normal person to work for you, right? Or thirty thousand. Okay, to work for you to change your life to make your life a little bit better, right? Okay, but for a normal person, for an ordinary person. Okay, how much do you think? If you if you want to hire the president of New York of the United States to work for you, how how expensive is that? I would say, in my at least ten million dollars, at least ten million dollars. For the president to work for you, okay, maybe even more, maybe a hundred a hundred、uh, million dollars. So how much did you pay for this, for whoever is going to be the president? Ten dollars, a hundred dollars. So, if you just pay so little, how could you expect that person to work for you and to to make your life better, to make a so, to make so large impact on so large impact on on your life?、Mm-hmm. Okay, makes sense. It's it's no impact. So, even though that person may make some decision that can. Benefit you or or make you uh give you a disadvantage, okay? So it's not for you. It's not f- he he or she does not make that decision for you, okay? He is is he or she is making the decision for the whole whole population, okay? So you're only a small fraction of that, and because he's only making decisions for the whole population, so with fifty percent, you're. Very likely, fifty percent you are going to have an advantage, and fifty percent you are going to have a dis disadvantage on a particular matter. So, fifty. So you at last you will find okay, no you so you, you most likely you you agree you cannot agree with all the opinions or other decisions from 
the president. If you are you agree with fifty percent, you are neutral about a, a a certain percent, and you are against totally against about a certain percent. So that guy is not working for you. You are the most important one in your life. Okay, you are the one who makes the most impact in your life. So. Do not waste your time to go to on to go on street and just take a very small fraction, let's say negligible fraction of the time of the president. Instead, use that time to devote on your life to make your life better. Study more, or say go to work for more. So every day think about. Do not think about who is who who is going to sit in the White House. It's not that important in your life. What's important in your life is like. How much balance is on your is on your credit card, and how much student loan do you carry? What is your dream job, and how much does it take for you to like say 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 to to get your first major purchase? So, <coughs> so I, I want I want you guys to be smart. Okay, do do not take the risk. First, do not take the risk of yourself and the other people to go to that to go on demonstration, go go for rally or go for anything without a face mask. And the second thing is is that is that if you have to visit your family, family during the Thanksgiving holiday, get tested before leaving. Okay, be a responsible person. Do not bring the virus to your loved ones. Third, you are the most important one in your life. So spend the time to invest the invest your time on yourself rather than on some remote remote people who sit remotely in the White House and work, for, who only spend maybe. One out of ten million of a second on you every year, okay. So, so uh, that's my three three uh three cents or two cents, okay. So then let's talk talk about the uh the second algorithm to the uh single source shortest path problem, and this algorithm is named Dijkstra. So the condition of this algorithm is that so it does not allow any negative edge. Weight so no negative no negative edge edge weight. So if you want to apply this algorithm on a certain graph, make sure that there is no negative edge weight. And the key idea is is very is so is to maintain a set of vertices whose shortest paths have already been determined. And then it, in each iteration, we 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 try to add one node to to this set. So this is the pseudo code. So, um. Uh, uh, the, and uh, so it, it, it again it has three parameters g w v g is the directed graph and w is the weight function s is the is the the, the source node and first we call the initialization algorithm by setting all the nodes all the nodes with a uh, infinity uh, distance and uh, uh, so so new parent and also except for the source which has a zero distance and then the set as as empty set and then it create it 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 creates a priority queue. It creates a priority queue with the all the nodes in the graph. So while the node is not while the queue is not empty, it's it's going to call the extract mean function over the queue, and then it is going to to uh to 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 include so add add s u to s add u to to the the set s. And then for each vertex v that is adjacent to u, it calls the relax function. Okay, so this is the the pseudo code, and uh, so again I'm going to use an example to uh, explain it. Okay, I want to add before it. <clears throat> okay, so let me write down the pseudo code right over here.
okay if you want to let me just write down the um the relax function okay uv w if v dot d is larger than u dot d plus w v and then we're going to set v dot d as u dot d plus w v and then we're going to set v dot pi as u okay so this is the relax function and <coughs> So let me write down the example over here. So we have plus tx. Y C. Okay, so this is the graph, and let's apply uh, the graph, uh, the, the textual algorithm on the graph, and here we said this is the south node, this is our south node S, and we want to uh, apply it, so the textual algorithm on, on the graph. So in the, in the beginning, we're going to call the initialization algorithm, so which in which we're going to set uh, to associate every node with a uh, infinity distance, and new parent except for the cells whose distance is zero so let's mark that down so for every node except for this one uh, I'm going to use a different color okay I'm going to use a blue color so zero and new this one is infinity new <coughs> infinity new So then uh, we create a S, S is a set, and initially it is empty. So we have S as empty set with nothing in it. And then we have Q as G equal to, uh, equal to, uh, to G dot V. So the priority Q, the priority Q has S, T, X, and Y, and Z. And the key associated with them are zero infinity 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 and infinity okay so in the beginning so while the while the queue is not empty while the queue is not empty we are going to call the extract mean function so we're going to so at in the current time we're at the current time we're going to extract s from the from the queue so because s has the smallest one so we we got s u equal to s so we have u equal to s so this is u okay this is u and then s equal to s union u okay so we have capital s equal to s equal union to u okay this is like add u to s to the set s to the to the cap to 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 the set s so here uh, we're we're just adding we're just adding the first node, which is u, is s. So we're just adding cap, uh, little little s to, to the capital S. Capital S is the set, okay? So this is the first first node in the set. And then for each vertex v that is adjacent to u. So here we have we have this as 
the adjacent node of u are t and and y yes from from s the only two nodes that we can we can reach directly are t and y so it is t and y okay for each node for each node v that is inside it so let me use a different color for <coughs> For that, so let me use the brown color. So we have v. In, first, we have v equal to t. So this is v, and we are going to call the relax function. The re, with the relax function, what we are going to check is to check if v dot d is larger than u dot d plus one. So here in this example, we have v dot d as infinity, and u dot d as zero. W v is here is ten. Okay, so. So infinity is definitely larger than zero plus ten, which is ten. So we are going to reduce uh, v dot d to zero plus ten. So we are going to reduce it to ten, and then we are going to set its parent to s to u, which is s. Okay, and then so we just finish the iteration over here, and then let's let's do another iteration at y. So we have v equal to y v equal to y, v is here, okay? So again, v dot y is infinity, and then uh, u dot d is, is zero, and w v is five, okay? w v is five, so so uh, this is true, and then we are able to reduce its distance from infinity to five, and then we're going to set its parent to, to u, which, which is s, okay? So this is the, um, the, the result. So we just finish the for loop, and with this for loop, we reduce the distance of t to ten, and uh, we reduce the distance of y to five. Okay, so uh, then we just finish this iteration of the while loop. So next, we're going to check if the queue is empty or not. So yes, it's not empty, and then. Uh, it's going to call the extract mean function. So the node that we're going to extract is right over here. So this node is gone. Y is gone. And then we have u equal to y. u equal to y. So this is this is u. And then uh, we have <coughs> so we in, so then we we include we add u to the to the set s. So set s has another node which is u and then we are going to <coughs> check the the neighbors of the neighbors of of uh of a u which is y so from y we can reach t we can reach x we can reach z yes so we have t x z as the neighbors t x z as the neighbors okay so let's first start with v as t okay so with v as t, so let's check. Okay, we have v dot d as ten, and u dot d as as five, and w v is three. So v dot d is ten. It is larger than. V dot d is ten. It's larger than u dot d, which is five, and w v is three. It's larger than this. So we are able to reduce it. And so we just reduced it to eight, and then we say we say its parent is going to be u, which is y. Okay, so we just finish now. We just finish the iteration at at t, and then we're going to to have another iteration at x. So this is v. Okay, so we have v dot d as infinity, and then u dot d as five, and w uh, w u v as nine. So five plus nine is fourteen, which is less than infinity. So we are able to reduce it. So we're going to reduce it to to fourteen and then set its parent to y. Okay, so we just finish the, the iteration at x and then we're going to start the, the iteration at at z. So uh, we have z we have z, v dot v dot d as infinity and then u dot d as 5 and w v as 2 so 5 plus 2 is 7 and then uh, which is less than infinity so we're going to reduce it to 7 and we are going to set its parent to y okay so 
here we finish the for loop and, and then we end up with uh, so so changing the weight changing the the weight of, of uh, the key of t to 8 the x to 14 and uh, z to 7 so okay so this is the result after this iteration of the while loop so we're going to check if the queue is empty or not it's, it's not empty so we're going to continue the loop again okay, sorry. this is 14 I'm just going to remove B. okay <clears throat> so then we are going to call the extract mean function and the among the three nodes left the one with the smallest key is z so z is going to be eliminated and added to s so and then for each vertex v so we have u equal to z u equal to z so we have u equal to z and then uh, we have <clears throat> the neighbors of it as so let's check the neighbors of z we have x and s s and x as its neighbor okay so uh first let's have v equal to s v let's put v over here so v dot d is zero whereas z dot d is seven and w uh, so this is u. I'm going to put a u over here. Okay, this is u and this is v. Okay, so here, w u v is is again seven. Seven plus seven is is fourteen, which is larger than zero. We cannot reduce it, so we we don't do anything, and then uh, we check <coughs> x. So the second node that we're going to check is x. So we have v dot d as 14 and then u dot d as 7 w v is 6 7 plus 6 is 13 which is smaller than 14 so we can reduce it so we are going to reduce it from 4 13 uh, 14 to 13 and then we're going to set its, its parent to z okay so <clears throat> so then we finish the iteration over here and the only thing that we change is the distance of x so from 14 to 30 and then we are going back to the while loop we are going to check if the queue is empty or not it's not empty so we are going to we are going to uh, remove the node called the extract mean and remove t because it has the smallest one so then we are going to add t to s so then for so we have uh, <coughs> u dot we have u equal to t so this is u and then uh, the neighbors of u includes includes y and x and y yes only x and y let's see if we can re re reduce them so so this is u and we have v first we have v as x we have v as x no i just used the wrong color v as x so let's have v as x uh, over here okay so v dot d is 13 and u dot v is 8 w v is 1 so what 8 plus 1 is 9 which is less than 13 so we're going to reduce it from 13 to 9 and then we're going to set its parent to <coughs> to t and then so we're going to check y okay so we have so we have v here okay u dot v dot d is 5 and u dot d is 8 and wv is 2 so 8 plus 2 is 10 which is larger than 5 so we can now reduce it so we don't do anything and then so uh, we we finish this for loop so we are going to uh, so in the for loop we, what we change is just the 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 key of x which is or the distance of x which is 9 okay so in the last we're going to call the uh we are going to check if the queue is empty or not. It's not it's not empty, it has still has one node. So we're going to 
to remove that only node which is uh, which is x so and then add x to the to to s so <coughs> and and uh, <coughs> we have u equal to to x and then this is x and so we are going to add it to s and then we are going to check its neighbors the neighbors of x only has z okay let's check if we can call, call the relax function at z so we have v equal to z so this is v and v equal to z is v dot z is 7 so sorry v dot d is 7 and u dot d is 9 and wv is 4 9 plus 4 is is 13 which is larger than 7 so we can now reduce it so we are not going to do anything in this iteration so uh and this is the uh uh so so the end of the of the algorithm because we just finished uh we just finished calling you know, so so now the the queue is, is empty so the, the we just terminated the value so as the whole algorithm and in the end we got this picture so which tells us okay from the south let's for example from the south to to this node t the minimum distance is eight to y the minimum distance is five to z the mean the minimum distance is seven to t uh, to x the minimum distance is x and so some of you may say okay how can we recover the shortest path let's say for example if we if we want to go from s to to x to follow the shortest path before reaching x we need to go to its parent which is t and before go, going to t we need to re visit its parent which is y and before visiting y we need to go to its parent which is s and sorry which is s and the parent of s is just the parent of s is just uh uh is just um new so this is the shortest path that goes from that goes from the south to to uh to x and the total distance is five plus three plus one nine so so this is how you um uh, can how can you reconstruct the shortest path and so this is the the algorithm and okay the time complexity of, of this algorithm is v log v plus plus e and it's relatively complicated so you don't have to remember it the only thing that you need to remember is that uh, so in most cases this one is more efficient than uh it's I mean, in all cases, this one is more efficient than Bellman 4, but it has one, one limitation, which is that there cannot be um, negative weights associated with the uh, edges in the graph. Okay, so uh, yes, this is the two algorithms that we illustrated. And here, if you look at the, the pseudocode of Dijkstra algorithm, and also if you look at the uh, the the third code of prim algorithm you can see that they're extremely similar very similar and actually if you've just finished if you have already finished implementing the prims prims algorithm it will only take you i would say 20 minutes to half an hour to revise it to be the uh the the dextra algorithm okay so and then after this week you are going to have your homework 10 which consists of two algorithms bellman 4 and dextra each one worth uh, 50 points and if you want to earn some extra credit you can implement the function to recover the shortest path and then you will be able to earn uh, 50 extra credit so yes that's it for this week and so so thank you and also most importantly stay stay safe don't overreact to anything okay so that's it uh, have a good one